Hi, I'm Shelley from Frills and Froth and this month is the first month that I am bringing you the pattern from the subscription boxes. So following from this, there is a full tutorial on how to make this month's pattern, which is the Hexi Mug Rug, as you can see. So let's get on into it. I'm trying. We're going to use four different fabrics and um, we're using Liberty fabrics and you need three quarter inch hexes, scissors, your paper pattern, matching thread, needle, fabric clips, glue pen, matching embroidery thread and batting. We're using 19 three and a quarter inch hexes for this project. Next you've got to decide which fabric you'd like to use for which row. I've decided to use the purple one for the backing and the cream for our centre hexy. So I need to cut one hexy out of the cream fabric and I do this by putting a little bit of glue on the hexagon, sticking it down and cutting a square around it, making sure I'm leaving a third of an inch all the way round. And then when I cut it, I again cut round, leaving a third of an inch. I just find it saves time doing it this way. So next you need to cut out six hexes from your row two fabric. I find it easier if you do this by sticking them all on and cutting it out in rows. Then cutting between each hexy and trimming round just like before, making sure that we leave a third of an inch all the way round. So we leave room for basting. And we do this with all our hexes. Continue with all your fabrics until all of them's cut out. If only could, I could do it this fast in real life, it would be fantastic. Next we're going to baste the hexes. I am liking glue basted at the minute, but if you want to sew baste them, then you can do. Um, to glue baste them, you run a tiny bit of glue around the edge of your hexy, just in from the edge. And then you fold your fabric over, working in an anti-clockwise direction, making sure your fabric it fits snug to the edge of your paper, but doesn't distort your hexy. And you carry on doing that until all of your hexes are glue basted. You should now have 19 basted hexes, one hexing in your centre fabric, six hexes in your row two fabric and 12 for your outer edge fabric. We're going to start by sewing together one of our, our middle hexes and one of the outside. First we tie a knot in a thread, making sure it's quite a big knot. I find the method you see now is the easiest by wrapping it round my finger. Next we're going to place our hexes right sides together, 
making sure our edges and the corners line up perfectly. I like to clip mine together to make sure they don't move. And then taking your needle, go up from in between the fabric and the paper hexi and come out at the corner. Taking your needle and catching a bit through the other side and coming back over and repeating it. Just catching a tiny bit of fabric each time from each of the hexes. Making sure you keep your needle nice and straight and just moving along a little bit at a time making sure you need your stitches are nice and even. Keep sewing until you get to the end. I'm driving down an empty when you get to the end we're going to remove the clip and open your hexi up. I like to do this to make sure that it's sewn on the right way. We're going to join our he next hexi on by doing the exact same method making sure our edges line up and so do our corners. We're going to use the same method of whip stitch again making sure our space not to sew through our papers and using nice small even stitches. It's very important not to sew through our papers at this stage because we will be taking them out later. When you get to the corner, I like to pop in some extra stitches. And tie it off by threading a needle back through the loop that you've just created. I like to do this a few times to make sure it's secure and then trim your thread. Next we're going to join the edge like we did before. Tying a knot and going up through the corner. And just using the same whip stitch as before. The papers are flexible so you can fold them but when I sew like this, I tend to keep mine open and just stitch between. But when I get to a corner where there's junction, where three join together, I like to do extra stitches to make sure all the edges are joined together in all directions. Again, using small stitches so we can't see them from the front. When you get to the end of this one, we're going to sew the next one on, working round, just sewing each hexi on in turn using the same technique of the whip stitch. Again, making sure our edges are lined up and using a clip. Remember this is slow and relaxing stitching so 
it obviously does take longer than what you're seeing in the video. Keep joining on and working all the way round till you get to your last hexi of your flower. Continuing to sew it on in the same way and securing at the end with a knot before you trim it off. You complete your flower by joining your hexi to the center and the side hexi just exactly the same way as we've done previously in the others but this will create your flower. Again you can see that the hexes are flexible and they do fold. Make sure to keep your needle straight as you stitch in and your stitches even. When you get to the end, tie off like you did before by threading your needle through the hoop. We're going to join our next row on exactly the same as we did the first. I like to lay them out like that so you can see where each block's going to go so you know where your hexes are going to end up when you're finished. Just carry on sewing round using your whip stitch, taking your time for this nice relaxing sew. I'm driving down an empty When you get to your last hexi, tie off and cut off like we've just done before. Next you need to put your hexi on top of your batting and draw around it with a pen. Round the corners to form a hexagon shape. I'd recommend using a ruler. I didn't, but I wish I did. It's to form a hexagon shape that's exactly the same as your hexi block. Then we're going to cut it out. As you can see that's what it looks like when it's finished. Next we're going to take a block over to the ironing board and give it a good press and take our um, hexi papers out. Making sure to press the seams down back into place when we've took our hexes out. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky. It's easier if you don't catch your papers as well. As you can see, I'm just pressing my seams back. Next, we're gonna cut our backing fabric out and we're gonna use the mug rug pattern that came with your pattern. I like to cut mine nice and close to the edge so we don't waste um, fabric. So cut all the way round and take pins out. 
I'm going to take it over to our ironing board and iron over a half an inch seam all the way round. Wrong sides to wrong sides, being careful not to burn her fingers. Then we're going to find the centre of a block and mark it with a pen and do the same with a block and our batting. And pin it on place onto our backing fabric. I'm just measuring round the edge and adjusting it to make sure it's in place. We need to fold over a side another one and a half centimetres to cover all the edges of a block to enclose them all. Carry on doing that and pressing it all the way round. And then hold your edges in place with clips. The corners automatically mitre themselves when you do this method, so they'll all be enclosed. We're going to sew our edges down using a blind stitch, making sure not to throw sew all the way through the block to the back. We're just catching the block and the batting and the edge of the fabric. coming up through the fold in the fabric and using nice stitches, small stitches. When you get to the start, back to the start. I like to pull my thread through and scrunch it up and cut your thread off and then it hides within your project. Next we're going to do some embroidery stitching in the centre of our now mug rod using three strands of the embroidery cotton and your embroidery needle. As you can see I'm splitting my th thread into half so there's three strands. Thread your needle and tie a knot in it. We're just going to do it with simple running stitches. And you go through from the back all the way through three layers. You can mark your design on but I decided just to freestyle. And just using running stitches do whatever pattern you'd like in the centre of your mug rug. As always it's, it's your pattern, it's your finished mug rug. So it's how you want it to look. I try to go round in a spiral design. And when you finish, you just take it through to the back and tie it off. And trim your thread. Now you have your completed mug rug. Enjoy your cuppa and enjoy your mug do rug. Well done. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch me and my hexi mug tutorial and um, if you liked the video give me a big thumbs up and if you want to see some more subscribe there's still some subscription boxes left available on our website and the pattern will be available separately see you soon bye